Hello, and welcome back to some more Star Citizen. Today, we are here with the Drake Interplanetary Caterpillar. And this is my ship. This is the one that, when I bought the Constellation Taurus, I thought, yeah, I'm going to do hauling, and, this, and then I saw some pictures of this, fell in love, and then it came for sale, and I bought one. I exchanged my Taurus for it. But anyway, it's 67 meters long which is a few meters long than the Constellations. Uh, it weighs 85,000 kilograms, metric kilograms, uh, obviously, so I guess that'd be 80, 85 tons, metric tons. Uh, it can crew a max of five people, but if I'm counting right in my head, there's more than five places for crew members. But the biggest thing is it has a cargo capacity of 512 units. It's got two tier 5 primary thrusters, but that is according to the website, and even now I can see that that is a little bit wrong, because there is, as you can see, one, two, three, four engines on the back of the ship. So I think the website may need to be updated. But, also according to the website, there is eight tier 2 maneuvering thrusters, which actually do a decent job of maneuvering the ship, actually. Um, it's it's comparable to the Starfarer, how it moves around in in space. Um, it's got a size 5 power plant, uh, four size 4 gimbaled mounts. It's supposed to have missiles, but they aren't a... Uh, mm. You know how I said I can't talk before? Well, I still can't. Um, it's supposed to have missiles, but it's unannounced how many it will have. It also is supposed to have an unmanned turret, but that is also unannounced. It's got size 5 shields, and actually one really special thing it's got is it's got a Mark III size 1 tractor beam, which can be controlled, obviously, from inside the ship. So without further ado, let's have a look around on the outside. So the first thing actually you kind of notice when you actually look into the ship is these big four prongs and if you actually get closer you can see their parking sensors which I think is brilliant actually because uh, as embarrassing as it is to say I have um, tipped this thing up or down and then clipped myself on whatever in front of me making for chaos and I've even exploded a couple times you can even and Again, the detail in this game is immense, because these stickers, you can read them. I don't know if I can zoom in or not, I don't think so. These parking sensors, as by that barcode, are produced by Neo Horizons Incorporated. <laughs> Failure to follow those instructions will result in death. <laughs> nice. Uh, looks like some sort of serial number. Uh, caution. And again, the detail on these things is so huge. It's just epic. Quite the parking sensors. Improper handling could result in injury or death. Sensor ventilation. That is actually really cool. I quite like that. Coming along the side here. Another thing to note would be that each of these modules, there's four modules, as you'll see later, module one, or four, three, two, and there's one there. Uh, these should be detachable, and they should be exchangeable for other modules. But anyway, uh, manual, max GR, I don't know what GR is. Um, is that a ladder? It actually looks like a uh, conduit of some sort. But these are the landing gears. Now these fold up into the ship. And actually they look really cool. And they are huge as well. And rotating, rotating parts can sever or can cause severe bodily harm. Hold on. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a grammar error. If you look there, rotating parts can cause several bodily harm. It should be 
severe, I would say. Who knows? But anyway, we can continue around, and it's pretty much the same. They've got the Kovalex uh, markings on it. Presumably that, that would be able to uh, be edited out, or not edited, but altered, so you can put whatever you want. Now this is a cool little thing. This is the cockpit of the ship, at least on the outside. You can see here, and uh, here, these are your these are two of your four size four gimbaled mounts. Why does that have to keep clear? Oh, that is actually a landing gear because this pod can detach from the main part of the ship. It's got its own engines and everything. So I think that's really cool. You can leave the caterpillar in space, supposedly, I guess and then take the pod to a planet. Who knows? So they got these huge engine intakes. It's hard to even get a view of all these things because, well, let's face it, I'm, I'm really tiny right now. You can walk underneath the whole thing for crying out loud. Like, that's two of me tall, basically. Um, out of the camera mode. Um, huge things rotate or they look like they should rotate at least. I don't know if they do. I have never seen them rotate. And again, like these, <laughs> they're so big. And when when this thing is flying, the uh, the engine animations are very pretty because they're so big and the ship is huge. Coming under here as well, like this landing gear is state about every landing gear, but it's phenomenal. And the way they kind of close up is fantastic. I can't ex I can't describe it like anything I've seen before in a game. If we move all the way back, you got most of the wall. You got two more massive engines. And we'll wrap around. Like, the detail on these things is also very incredible. I like this ship because it has a very industrial feel, and that's that's Drake Interplanetary for you. Um, what's that say? Engine ventilation. Pull. Well, I can't pull. I'm, I'm jumping. I, I can't pull that. So I guess we're just in uh, trouble. Um, so yeah, that's an engine. That little... I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little... There's a little glass roof on the top of that wing, and that's where you'll be able to control the tractor beam from. So, maybe... Ah, yeah, so it says there, tractor hardpoint on that on that thing, right there in the center, center of your screen where that text will be. But, I don't know if that itself will be what the tractor beam looks like, or if that's just where it's going to be going, and they're just telling us where it's going to go. But... That's cool, all the same. Um, let's run around to the front, see if we missed anything, and then we'll head inside. I don't think so. But we can run under here. I don't know what those are. Um, would that be an oxidation warning, or would that be a fire warning? I don't know. Um, let's run down here. I think these are maneuvering thrusters, which again, like, I think the website is a little outdated because there's two there, two there, two there, two there, that makes eight, and this thing only, yeah, that makes eight, <laughs> and this thing only has eight, and there's a lot more in this ship, let me tell you. I don't know what this is, some sort of a ventilation device or something. Module two? Yeah, I would assume so. Um, this is how we get in. We will actually go inside in a minute. It's a little elevator. Um, impact hazard. I think, shouldn't it be rotated uh, clockwise 90 degrees? Because the elevator would come down and crush you. Um, I don't know. Oh, I think that's a little bit of a clipping there. We'll just uh, look away. Um, you actually have a turret on the bottom, 
as well. What are these tanks? Ventilation and explosive. I think this should be a little bit more descriptive. <laughs> Still can't talk. They should be a little bit more descriptive than saying ventilation. They should put, like, uh, proper names of what gas actually goes in those containers. But this is the outside of your turret. Your glass is extremely dirty. Not on the inside, though, so don't worry. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll hop in and have a look at those in a minute. Um, let's call the elevator. Oh yeah, okay. So, all of the things that you have to control in the ship that move, like platforms like this or anything, you have to go to the control panel and use it. So let's bring that up. Just realized I wasn't looking at I was not looking at the hydraulics, so we'll just we'll just run it again because they're really cool. And we'll go up again. So this is the caterpillar, and it kind of um, starts the standard for the modeling of all the Drake ships that will be coming out. The uh, um, the uh, pardon me, the Herald had the styling, and also the new Cutlass will have the styling. Um, so when you come up the elevator, that's the front of the ship, habitation access, as it says in the door. Another thing that's great about this ship is that all the doors are labeled like that. Again, this says habitation access. Um, got a gun rack. When you land on planets, you need your guns. Um, let's go to the back. Let's go to the lower hallway. That's that said, right there, lower hallway. Also, these keypads. Um, presumably, we will be able to use them with passwords and such. So, yeah, that's a fun little thing. I think, yeah, we can control the elevator from that panel there. Cool. I want to put it up now, so it... We'll put it up and then we'll move out. Uh, lower tunnel. Um, so we have a lot of computers in here. What is that? Looks like the Death Star. Hmm. So a lot of computers actually... One cool thing that we'll get to in a bit is that you can... There's a server room in this computer. Or in the ship, pardon me. So these are the engines. Your two tier fives. Which, I mean, maybe these would be the engines and then um, the power is just split between all four or something, but I'm not sure. But <laughs> I'll say it again and again and again and again. The detail in these things is huge. I mean, like, just, like, look at those things. Even the smoke that comes out of them is just incredible. Or is it, would that be steam? I don't know. Um, I don't know what these are. What are these? What's that say? Um, consult manual before using, are these air tanks of some kind? I don't know. Are they oxygen, like air for the ship or something? I don't know. Um, you got some more on this side. Fuel. What's that little sticker say? In emergency, these systems may shut down. Nice. Um, you got a little engineering station. Let's let's use it. There it is. So, yeah, as as. Isn't there some way I can get my mouse? I don't know. Um, so yeah, as an engineer you'll be able to come back here and analyze all your systems, control power, shield, whatnot, if you're not on the bridge. I hope you would need someone out here though, because yeah, that would make thing make uh, gameplay pretty cool. Ah, uh, ooh, that's a very cool view. I've never seen that before. Um, damage, that's how the ship gets damaged, basically. The underside mesh. Okay. 
don't think we were supposed to see that, but oh well. Looks like we can take the floor away. Maybe that'll be some sort of minigame, because it says manual release. Um, <laughs> this ladder goes upstairs, we'll get to that. <laughs> so this is how we get into that turret. So why don't we hop inside? If the chair doesn't take you out. And here we are. This is the turret. Uh, according to the top right, it looks like our targeting or our HUDs might be a bit broken, but all in all, viewing out of this thing is actually really good, considering that the, well, just trying to think of what, it, what you can compare it to, the bottom turret in the constellation is pathetic because you can't, you can't look down relative to the ship because you're sitting upright in that turret. Or at least it used to be. I don't. I don't remember if they allow it to flip now. But again, the detail in here is great. I don't like that metal here, though. I really don't like that. To be honest, I hope they change that. But yeah, let's get out of here. Back into engineering. Be terrible if you forgot your code and you were just like stuck in this little room. But like these doors, if you look as well, they're like <laughs> what do you say, six inches thick? So if there's like oh, lighting issues. If there's a uh, a problem with the ship for some reason, then they need to be able to hold you. Uh yeah, that door goes to stairs. Um constructed with hundred percent recycled material. So we're helping the uh, space environment, the environment. Ha! Huh. I'm so funny. Uh, let's go up the stairs. I like the stairs in this ship. Uh, center hallway. There's a lot of computers in this ship, which, I mean, to me, it's, um, ugh, the flickering it means a lot of mini games. Emergency supplies. If you fall down the stairs and you, your friend can throw that down to you. I don't know. Is this is the upper hallway. Uh, where should we go? So many places we can go. Um, let's go to the tractor beam. So this is the tractor access, which is that little room that I was pointing out earlier. So this is a, a little screen and presumably you'd be able to control it from here. Actually, it's really cool to kind of stand out here when someone else is flying the ship because you can just you can just look around. It's a little tourist or something. Let's have a nice look out at the stars. It's a good time. Let's go back down here. Uh, that goes to the EVA access. We'll get back to that upper hallway. Let's go in here. So this is the as the door said, they open way too soon, I think. This is a server access that I had mentioned a few minutes ago. And Man Alive is this cool. So many computers. You get two Death Stars on that screen. But, oh man. This thing is so cool. Even like, <laughs> if this was like a 4K picture, they might even look real. If they don't look, if they don't look real already. Um, so back here, this is the power plant. Um, capsule 1, capsule 2, um, would it be nuclear? I don't know. I don't know if it would be a nuclear power plant or not. That fan should be spinning. Um, a little one right there. But, Juno, Starwork. I would hope that the power plant was nuclear. What, is this? what are these? Um, oh yeah, so yeah, I guess the ship is mostly recycled. That's really cool, actually. Um, this might be a little control panel for the power plant. Hard to say. Um, back here is where we can get the jump drive. Because this ship has a jump drive. Um, um, 
There's something there. I can't walk into that quarter. It's weird. Hmm. There's ghosts in my ship. Are you going to call? Um, the police, because problems. Um, yeah, I guess this is how we control the jump drive, is from back here. Uh, that ladder goes to the engine room, engine room, which is where we just were. I don't know what the actual, where the actual jump drive is, though. I think you just, you can calibrate it or something here. Who knows? Hard to say. Um... We won't go down that ladder, we'll actually go back down through the center hallway. The upper hallway, the place that we missed. Okay. So this this is a center hallway now. We just have exited the upper hallway. Um let's go to the bridge. So this is a command access. You got a double door because as I said before, this part of the ship can detach. So here we are. That goes to the center hallway. So in here we have a massive window. I'll set up here actually. The pilot sits at the front. In this very good looking chair. And the co-pilot sits back here. Is that a date? I don't know. But let's enter the pilot seat. Welcome aboard your Drake interplanetary craft. Your systems are online. So viewing in this ship is actually... <laughs> aside from the ship itself, it's pretty good. I mean, you have these huge massive windows, which you can't really see the scale of it while I'm in this view. So I'll switch out a little bit here. And, yeah, that's me. I'm that little dude. And then these windows are absolutely massive. It's fantastic. It's like it's like a little, very small capital ship of sorts, I suppose. Um, and also, one of the things I love about this ship is the, uh, I guess, the steering wheel. Somehow we have thrust controls. I don't know what that emergency stop button is for. I don't know why you would want to stop mid-flight. I mean, maybe if your engines were overheating or something, I don't know. But, yeah. I like the screens. And as I said, viewing in this is not bad, except the right side, because the ship is there. But, a little yellow bar, I don't know why that's there. You don't really need it. Not really protecting yourself from anything. Slide back. Kinda hop out. Oh, that is a problem. You can't see it from that side. But when you come around... Wow. I hope someone notices that. Because that is <laughs> hilarious. Let's enter the co-pilot seat. How exciting. You get nothing to do here. I mean, for crying out loud, your uh, Moby Glass isn't even on your wrist properly here if you look down there at the bottom. Um, so, yeah. I mean, you can not see as well here. I mean, you have a big seat in front of you. But, I mean, maybe here you're just targeting, I don't know, doing any other job that your co-pilot might do. So, I love the detail in this cockpit, though. It's, I've always been, like, astounded by it. Actually, is my head even... My head is a bit broken, isn't it? It's not supposed to do that. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's me. So let's get a good view of the ship over outside here. So if we're looking on the top, like I love that shiny metal. Actually, what am I? Well, let's jump down later. I'll jump down later. Let's hop out of the seat. Moving back, we have two other command sort of seats of some sort. Um, we'll sit in one of them. I guess we'll sit in that one. Um, pretty much the same sort of deal that we got 
going on at the front there in the co-pilot seat. You got nothing to do. Maybe you're targeting your you're adjusting shields or something. Let's hop out of there. We'll enter the other one for the sake of science. Um, I don't know what these little things are. Command modules. System things. Are they hard drives, maybe? Hmm. On the yellow box, it says, failure to turn off power before removing will result in explosion. So, I love how they're basically saying, if you don't turn off the power, you're going to die. And there's no compromise to that. This thing gets even bigger, because there's a ladder here. Ooh, I like that lighting. Lighting is broken. It will be fixed. But if we head down this ladder, then we get into here. And it, it's... It <laughs> I like how the beams are just like out in the open. It's fantastic. Um, we've got a shower here. Nice little handles. Fit in there pretty well. Not too bad. Uh, the mirror doesn't work. It, it may never. I don't know. <laughs> They might, because maybe they, maybe they can borrow some tech from Rockstar, Rockstar Games. Because in GTA, the mirrors work. Uh, we can migrate around here. Actually, where's the toilet? Isn't there supposed to be a flip-down toilet here? I don't remember. <laughs> when you're fixing the shower, improper handling could result in injury or death. <laughs> Perfect. Got some wires. Um, this is a crew quarters. You got four beds. That should be not enough beds, I feel. Got a little cook stove. Little sink. Very, uh, <laughs> very menacingly dark sink. These lights don't really do much, do they? table. Should seat four comfortably. More or less. Um, and actually, coming down here is another place where you can just kind of kind of look. It is kind of cool. Ooh. Looks like we have another uh, pop-up piece here. This should not be there. Interesting. But I don't know what you'll be able to do this for... I wish I could talk. I don't know what you'll be able to do from this screen. Maybe you'll be able to uh, navigate for the pilot when this little pod is detached. I don't know. But we should move on to the most important part. Is the bridge the most important part? I don't know. But the next part of the ship, which is the big cargo modules. This is EVA access. The modules are down there, hence the door saying Module 1 access. This is how we would EVA out of the ship, but unfortunately, you can't use it. You can't walk up the ladder. It's not working right now. We're actually going to go to the modules from down below, because the modules are two floors. And going down, going into the modules from up there, you'd be on the top floor, and I don't want to be on the top floor. Also, it gives me an excuse to show off the habitation area, which you have four more beds in here. So, really, can you crew 16 people on this ship? Is there enough things for people to do? On the bridge, theoretically, there's five stations. Four on the top floor, one on the bottom. Engineering, there's one, maybe two. So that's six or seven. Turret, there's one behind us. So that'd be seven or eight. There's a turret in the front, actually, so that, so that would be eight or nine. Maybe one person working on the power plant, that's nine or ten people. So, <laughs> needless to say, I think you can crew a lot of people on this ship, plus all the people monitoring your cargo. I mean, not that there will have to be someone there doing it, but 
it is an option, right? So, yeah, this is the crew area. So, or actually, maybe this is like, because in the uh, command pod there was a table and a stove and a sink in there itself. So maybe that's for like the elitists or the uh, officials on your ship. And this is the area for your scum or the other crew on your ship. So yeah, I don't know. You got a little table here. Some sort of uh, thing that will eat you if you open it proper improperly. Um, this door just goes back to the elevator. Um, it's got the oven, sink. There's not really much else here. You actually have a toilet in this one, so maybe you have to come down here to use a toilet. I'm sure it'll be fixed. <laughs> I'm sure the one up there will be fixed. But, alas, here we go, into the module. Double doors because, hey, what if the hull was breached? Then all the air would escape from your habitation. So these are the big modules. Now, presumably... Yeah. You'll be able to store a lot in here. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But one really cool thing about this ship is that the sides open up, so you can just come over here, hit use on that, and the side opens up. You can jump out if you want. See, we're out. Oh, now we have to go back in. That was a waste of time. Sorry. <laughs> back up. Go back in here. See how that side opens? So does this side. It's really cool. Actually, look at these hydraulics on the side. Isn't that fantastic? if we did the same thing. I just think that's great. And there is a ladder, actually, in each of these to get to the catwalk, which we will explore in a little bit. So, yeah, there's a lot of space in here. I'm not really filling up this space at all. You should be able to change these out in the game. Module 2. Same thing. It is exactly the same. The sides open up. Both sides. If we went on to module 3, <laughs> it's exactly the same. Everything opens up all the same. Now module 4. It's also the same. It's the exact same. So yeah. I guess this variant is just mainly for cargo. Now, but the really cool part is the cargo access area, as the door said. So this is the very front of the ship. What do you reckon these huge hydraulic rams do? Well, if you hit the button... Oh yes, the whole front of the ship opens up, and from outside, that's just like that. I think that's so cool. Now, also, I think, I might be wrong about this, but I, I hope that the front part, this little platform, will be able to lower down so that you can use it properly. So if we're back in here, we want to close it up. Let's come up here. Close it up. These big, huge hydraulics, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, make sure cargo is... Con or, uh, hold on. Number three, watch out for potentially what? Potentially what? What are they telling me? They need a big sticker, and also the color of the sticker needs to be the same. But, anyway, I'm being picky now. Emergency access point. For what? 
Actually, I'm curious about something. What happens? What happens if I stand right here? What's gonna happen? Oh, look at that. Yeah, you don't want to get your fingers caught in there or anything. Now another thing, actually, is how is the cargo going to be held down? Now I would assume that you'd have to use these little latches. Hard to say. Oh, look at that. There's a little window for the catwalk. Again, I love the detail in these things. Um, just the vents and how, like, industrious they look. In the Drake ships, that is. Um, actually, another really cool thing before we move on. If you remember the dragonfly, you can store the dragonfly in this ship, and it actually fits really well in the front. Well, that like, according to the concept art, we haven't actually been able to see it yet, but that'll sh that should be coming. Let's go back to the front and check out the catwalk. We won't use the ladders because I, I hate ladders. We'll go all the way through engineering. We'll take this ladder, actually. Number one. So here we are, we're on the catwalk, and actually a really cool thing is you have this screen, which, assumably, you'd be able to look after your cargo here. And you also have these control panels. So port side, port side, starboard side, starboard side is the right side, so if we hit use, then the starboard side, the right side, would open. Same thing if you closed it. And these ones are cool. Because you have a hydraulic right here, and you don't want to hit your head. Or else you'd have some problems. Let's just close that up, if we can. Module 2. We'll close these. Module 3. We're all close. Oh, no, don't do that. Okay. Module 4. It's all closed. Because it's all the same. And now this is cool. It said, what did it say on the door? Turret access. There's a turret at the front of this ship. So you can call the turret think you can actually call it with a button, you just have to do it like any normal turret and just use it. Gotta get right up in there. So this is the top turret. Um, it's actually got better viewing than the other one because you don't have a ship right underneath you. That being said, if, if we just look behind us, there is a whole ship there. So maybe not but it is pretty much the same as the other one. Let's hop out of there. And also another thing to note would be, just like the other parts of the catwalk, you can open the front here. And close it. Alright, so let's see if we can't get onto the top of this thing.
anyway, I guess maybe we can... I mean, like, if I jump from there, I'm not even going to make it. Ooh, where's this door go? Absolutely nowhere. Anyway, um, but, I mean, that's a pain. But, I mean, I guess I can kind of get a good look at it from up here. Um, I love that silver medal. It's the same as the freelancer ships. I just love how silver it is, and it really goes well with the red. Uh, and <laughs> the detail on the top is fantastic. Again, that's like the big thing about all these ships is the amount of work they put into them, and it really does pay off. So kudos to them. Uh, that little circle there is that airlock that we couldn't get up into before. Um, I mean, I'm sure one day that'll be working and it'll actually be useful for something. Um, does that just say Drake Interplanetary? Yeah. The number 678 on the end of that wing. I don't know what that's... I do not know what that is referring to. Um... That's pretty much it. Let's go back down now. So what do I think of this thing? That's become the age-old question in my videos. What do I think of the... A caterpillar? Well, I think it certainly is a caterpillar. I mean, like, you can tell why they call it that because of the legs. The landing legs, but... You know what? I absolutely love this ship. It's a massive ship. It can crew a lot of people. It can take a lot of cargo. It can go pretty quick. It's very maneuverable. I love this little thing that can detach the little capsule of the command module. It can detach. I just I love all the animations with it. It's very practical. <laughs> Again, it's huge. It has two floors in it for crying out loud. Um I love how it looks. It's just everything about it, I think, is a bonus. The only thing is, you may need a couple people to crew it. So, good thing I'm part of a huge organization. And with that... <laughs> if I can just run to the front... I thank you so much for watching this video, actually. And... <laughs> Please stay tuned for some more Star Citizen. Man, this thing is this thing is so long you can't even like get across the whole thing in a decent amount of time. It's fantastic. But anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye bye.